Hello, I'm Anne Roosevelt. The March of Dimes story began when my grandfather, Franklin Delano Roosevelt, declared an all-out war on the disease known as polio. Be healthy children anywhere USA. We must face the fact that any one of these could be the next victim of infantile paralysis. It can happen anywhere, anytime. Polio, a highly contagious viral disease that devastated countless young children. It was dubbed the crippler because of its paralytic effects on the body, instilling fear in parents across the nation. Here in the Midwest, Warrensburg, Missouri became a ghost town late August and early September 1952, as its people tried in vain to prevent polio with spraying of DDT as a wishful weapon. My grandfather knew polio all too well, having suffered from it for most of his life. But his personal struggle only strengthened his resolve to find a cure. And in 1938, he established a national foundation for this purpose. He asked every American citizen to enlist in the fight. Tonight, because of your splendid help, we are making it possible to unite all the forces by starting the work of the new National Foundation for Infantile Paralysis. Indeed, the whole country remains the field of work. Inspired by his call, volunteers across the country organized a spirited campaign. The comedian Eddie Cantor used the term March of Dimes to appeal for funds in a radio pitch, and the name stuck. You can lick infantile paralysis with the March of Dimes. The first march brought in over two and a half million dimes to the White House door. Send your dimes to President Roosevelt at the White House. The money raised went to treatment and scientific research. Dr. Jonas Salk, Foundation grantee, worked for over half a decade to develop a vaccine. And after the largest field trial in medical history, he unveiled the miracle volunteers could only dream of. From overcast Ann Arbor, Michigan this morning, humanity received some of the brightest news in all its history. The killer, the crippler, poliomyelitis is losing the war. The vaccine could be considered 80 to 90 percent effective against paralytic poliomyelitis. One of the greatest medical achievements of all time had been accomplished. With polio defeated, the March of Dimes had an impressive victory under its belt. The people power of the March of Dimes could now be directed to another children's health issue, birth defects. The Foundation's new directive led to some of the most dramatic medical breakthroughs of the second half of the 20th century. 1961, March of Dimes grantee Robert Guthrie develops a simple test to screen newborns for PKU, which can cause mental retardation and death unless treated promptly. 1985, March of Dimes grantee T. Allen Merritt of the UC San Diego Medical Center develops surfactant therapy to treat respiratory distress syndrome, which kills 8,000 infants each year. Within a three to five year period, surfactant therapy ought to be available to almost all babies being born prematurely in this country who need it. By the mid-1990s, surfactant is approved for use across the nation, saving thousands of babies' lives every year. 1994, the March of Dimes launches a national campaign urging women to take the B vitamin folic acid to reduce the risk of birth defects of the brain and spine. Have you heard about folic acid? Yes. Women need to take folic acid before they're pregnant in order to prevent birth defects of their babies. Really? Mm -hmm. Later, March of Dimes volunteers petition the FDA to add folic acid to fortified grain products like bread and pasta. These bold steps lead to a one-third reduction in neural tube birth defects. 1998, March of Dimes volunteers persuade Congress to pass the Birth Defects Prevention Act, establishing a nationwide network of birth defects monitoring and research programs. These milestones are but a few of the historical triumphs made possible by the March of Dimes. Today, our mission is to improve the health of babies by preventing birth defects, premature birth, and infant mortality. While we're proud of the progress we've achieved in the fight against infant death and birth defects, we still face a new epidemic.
There is nothing worse than watching a tiny baby struggle to hold on. The first time that I saw her up close, I wanted to throw myself over and protect her, and I couldn't even touch her. Since 1981, there has been a 30% increase in premature births. Each year, more than half a million babies are born premature. I take care of babies that probably go through more in the first four months of their lives than many of us ever go through in a lifetime. And they literally are fighting to stay alive. Prematurity is a national crisis. It is the most common, the most serious, and the most costly problem that affects American babies today. As a society, we are not aware of how many premature babies are being born right now. Uh, certainly, if you told everyone out there you have a 10% ri risk of a major medical complication in this year of your life, that would raise significant concern. Since 2003, the March of Dimes has led a national campaign to fight premature birth and raise awareness of its serious consequences. Behind me are 140 March of Dimes volunteers, pregnant women, making a figure eight to make the point that one out of eight babies are born premature in our country today. We have a four-pronged strategy to achieve our mission, which includes research, education, community services, and advocacy. We fund scientific initiatives that could make prematurity a thing of the past. You're dealing with a very complex disorder with multiple explanations, um, with multiple genetic predispositions, um, and it isn't caused by a virus like polio. What we're trying to determine is um, how to get the uterus to relax better when someone has premature labor conditions or um, it looks like they're having contractions. If you're the first to discover a protein that's key in that whole process, it impacts so many women. It's like one piece of the puzzle that is essential for putting the rest of the puzzle together. We also continue to press forward with research that will help us understand the causes of birth defects and how they can be prevented. The advances are coming fast and furious. And I think that in the not too distant future, we're gonna see devastating diseases like sickle cell, like cystic fibrosis, that are going to be able to be cured. The March of Dimes is one of the organizations that actually supports basic research in functions such as development and differentiation. Foundation grantee Mike McEwen is answering fundamental questions about the genetics of fetal development. This radiograph will give us insights into how a baby develops, insights which will help us prevent or cure malformations of the limbs spinal cord, and brain. In 2005, the March of Dimes published its Global Report on Birth Defects, which was the first report to quantify the international prevalence of birth defects, offering comprehensive recommendations for ameliorating the problem. The report is one of many global initiatives sponsored by the March of Dimes. We help women through pregnancy, providing support and information before, during, and after birth. We reach them in print, on our website, and through our workplace wellness initiative, Healthy Babies, Healthy Business. It's so essential that, that they get the information and for it to be free and for it to be right there and for it to be easy to access, that's so perfect. That's just so perfect for the March of Dimes to do. We're able to use today's technology to give moms the critical information they need before they become pregnant while they are pregnant, and during those first two years after they have a newborn. Our websites, marchofdimes.com and nasersano.org, are a trusted source for the latest information. In local communities, the March of Dimes provides much needed services and grants to local community-based groups. For example, parents of babies hospitalized in a neonatal intensive care unit, or NICU, need all the comfort and support they can get. That's why the March of Dimes developed NICU Family Support, a program that provides information and emotional support to families in crisis. Our Share Your Story website is another place where families can come for information and to tell their stories. And the March of Dimes also funds programs like our mobile health centers in Louisiana and Mississippi that provide education, 
information, and care to moms and babies affected by the 2005 hurricanes. March of Dimes volunteers advocate for babies at the local, state, and national level. Just one example is our work to promote mandatory newborn screening tests in every state. These tests, done by one tiny prick to a newborn baby's heel, can detect metabolic disorders that, if diagnosed early, can be successfully managed or treated to prevent severe disability or even death. The March of Dimes now recommends screening for 29 treatable conditions, and volunteers are moving full speed ahead to make this a reality in all 50 states. When you have a premature baby, it's different. And just a simple little thing of hearing your child cry just is so emotional because it's just something other people take for granted. Had we been somewhere that did not have the facilities that are available because of the March of Dimes, I know for a fact my child would not have survived. It is only through the dedicated and collaborative efforts of these staff and volunteer partnerships that we will be able to achieve our goal of a healthy birth for every baby. I really don't think that our children would be here, especially our son, if it weren't for the surfactant <laughs> therapy that was created by funding by the March of Dimes. The March of Dimes is about finding out why, what is the cause behind these premature births and what can we do as a society, as a nation, to combat that. This is a, a cause, a passion. This is not a job. I don't, I don't go to work. I go to fulfill a mission that I have every day. We really do need uh, the March of Dimes to raise money and help figure out what is going on with this problem. Why is it that, you know, all these premature babies are being born? They're fighting to have a chance. They're fighting to have a future. They're fighting to someday go to ballet class, to someday play Little League Baseball. It's my goal to help the March of Dimes because they're out there helping moms like me. There's nothing more precious than a newborn baby. And if you've ever seen a baby that did not have the perfect birth, you would understand that, whether it's a baby with a birth defect or a baby that was born prematurely. But if you've seen a baby in the NICU, you know that a perfectly normal, healthy birth is a miracle in and of itself. The March of Dimes is working to give each and every baby born that start. How can you say no? What is more precious than that?